by Sri Lanka's best internet package for online learning and online working with many amazing offers. Call 1212 for more information. Sri Lanka Telecom. Lenka, tu kuma wedi karaga ne? Lao ju rupyal panata du kala. Mama, en api te ekak bom. Tonight, in and out, more areas to be isolated from tomorrow morning while some to taste freedom. It's a must. Sri Lanka renews calls for international level relief to withstand COVID-19 shocks. Sri Lanka notes with concern that increased international financing and moratorium on debt are required for developing countries. Opening the gates. Minister of Aviation hopes to open airports in January while the parliament hears calls for more tourism sector relief. Since there has been no tourist business happening, I would like to suggest the same payment to be continued for another six months till the tourism industry resumes operations. No communication. Former Chief of Defence Staff pins Easter attacks blame on former SIS Chief and the CID. All that and much more coming up on First at Nine. This Sunday, the 6th of December, 2020. From Ada Derana, this is Ada Derana First at Nine. Nava Sunlight Sakura, then Dikukal Pavatina Sakura Mal Suandin. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to First at Nine. I'm Dhammi Kekanaika. Now, the congestion at prisons and related COVID-19 risks have been well documented in the recent times, with the government aiming to ensure the release of 8,000 inmates, including those who are unable to post bail by the end of the year. Health authorities assure that inmates being released will be subjected to PCR as well as rapid antigen tests. The epidemiology unit says that after the release, the inmates will be home quarantined depending on the test results. Health authorities say that the number of COVID-19 cases detected from each isolated area is on the decline. That said, there are however more cases popping up from other areas which are presently not under isolation. Though there had been one day where 11 deaths were confirmed, the daily number of fatalities continued to range between 1 to 10. Yesterday it was confirmed that 7 more people had succumbed to the virus. Five of them were above the age of 60. As for the other two, one was a 53-year-old while the other was a 56-year-old. According to the Department of Government Information, the cause of death of three of the victims had been COVID-induced exacerbation of underlying medical conditions. The cause of death of the other four victims had been COVID-19 pneumonia. Meanwhile, it was also revealed that two of the deaths involved prison inmates. In the meantime, 362 COVID-19 patients were identified from the country today. Yesterday, however, a total of 669 COVID-19 patients were confirmed. Though the Colombo district posted the highest number of daily infections with 204, what's alarming is the fact that 170 fresh cases were confirmed from the Kandy district. It is the second highest in the country yesterday. 147 inmates from the Bogambara prison are also among the cases reported from Kandy. Meanwhile, the district of Gampa too shows a spike in daily infections, recording 101 cases. In addition, 117 COVID-19 infections were detected from 14 other districts. In the meantime, the total number of persons infected in relation to prison stand at 2,128. Out of this figure, 562 are prison inmates who have successfully recovered from the virus. Belonging to this overall figure are also 91 prison officers, out of which 38 have been discharged from hospitals after recovering from the virus. In the prisons, we can see that there is some sort of increase of COVID-19 infection that is spreading. And to counteract that, we have taken several measures that includes the thinning out the prison inmates and also to chew this at the moment that the things are made to release on bail as much as possible that remand prisoners and also to release the prisoners who can be released with some sort of concession. So when these people are releasing, they will be subjected to PCR testing and rapid antigen test and will be identified the, all the patients at the time of release and those patients will be admitted 
admitted to a hospital or intermediate care center and they will be treated and will be released back to their home only after they were cured. Those who are testing negative at the time of testing or at the time of releasing will be sent to their home with the, by informing the area police and also to the medical officer of health and the public health inspector and to monitor the quarantine at the, their own residences. So when they are undergoing the home quarantine, there is no risk that the COVID-19 can be spread if by chance those people are COVID the positive patients to spread into the community. So with that, this is a very good measure that we have taken to stop this transmission of COVID-19 within the prisons and also to ensure that those who are releasing from the prisons will not spread the disease to the society. As things stand, Sri Lanka's total number of active COVID-19 infections stand at 6,993. 20,460 persons, meanwhile, have recovered from the virus in the island since COVID-19 first broke out in March. Safeguard hand sanitizer. Navatama nishpaadana pella. Nero ki matti veyakata. Lanka fe palam varata handun vaadena. Mali pandiji cracker. Crunchy veggie. Now, Sri Lanka once again called on, global, on the global community and lending agencies to focus on providing finance and debt moratoriums to developing countries to weather the adverse effects brought on by COVID-19. This was conveyed by Foreign Minister Dinesh Gunawardana while addressing the 31st special session of the General Assembly in response to the COVID-19 pandemic recently. During the virtual session, the minister also said that the United Nations should make the COVID-19 vaccine a global public good while making it free and accessible. Sri Lanka has a long history of successful vaccination programs. When introducing the COVID-19 vaccination program, the government ensures that public confidence is maintained. Sri Lanka is already included in the COVAX facility for COVID-19 vaccination for the implementation of a more safe vaccine program in liaison with the WHO. A coordination committee consisted of highest level experts and the Ministry of Health has been appointed. Following the discussions with the WHO, UNICEF, ADB and the World Bank, the government has been able to secure funds for improvement and procurement of the equipment for the maintenance of vaccine cold chains. As the virus transits all national boundaries, the role of the United Nations is pivotally felt today. Sri Lanka reiterates the call for the UN Secretary General to make COVID-19 a vaccine global public good free and accessible to all. The United Nations need to mobilize all resources and partners to this end without any exception. Sri Lanka notes with concern that increased international financing and moratorium on debt are required for developing countries at this time of crisis. Sri Lanka reiterated that the middle-income countries be given special attention and joint secretary general's call to broaden the eligibility for G20 debt service suspension initiative DSSI and to include the MICs. In the meantime, Minister of Tourism Prasanna Ranatunga says that the government hopes to open the country's airports for tourists by the beginning of next year. Speaking in Parliament, Ranatunga said that it has to be done as the new normal means living with COVID-19. That wasn't all in Parliament yesterday, with emotions running high over storing off paddy at the Matala Rajbaksh International Airport during the previous regime. Kauru kami tu nat natat api tak kauit sama ke jiwat ini nelayan tiennah ini sa sauk ke marga upadesh Filipati min laban abasar mula di api guan turpulat sasa sancara kinta view takaran balap perut tiennah api sauk ke ansol tu kewe januari palingan dah menunggu tapi tu dini aklabah dini nak tu itu keran januari masa kelan tu cricket pilih langka abad pemilih nawasta inggalan tu entamai wedding pilih sak me tharangan naraban ini evagen wedding wiedemak keran minisweni inggalan tu test cricket tharangan dekak ma pawatan ni galli sesi me 
කොරෝනා තත්ත්වය යටතේ සෞඛ්‍ය බලධාරීන්ගේ උපදෙස් අරගෙන බබල් සිස්ටම් එකට අනුව හම්බන්තොට ගුවන්තොට බලට චාටර් ෆ්ලයිට් වලින් ගෙන්නගෙන හෝටලෙන් ක්‍රීඩාංගණයටත් ක්‍රීඩාංගණයෙන් හෝටලයටත් පමණක් යන විදියට 500ක් වත් එංගලන්තේ අර බාමි ආමි ක්‍රිකට් ලෝලීන් ගෙන්න ගන්න පුළුවන්ද කියලා බලන්න කියලා මම ඔබතුමාට මතක් කරනවා අද මත්තල ගුවන්තොට පොළට ගුවන් යානා යන එක ගැන සතුරෙන් කතා කරනවා මම ස්තුතිවන්ත වෙනවා මේ ඔබතුමාට මතක් කරන්න ඕනේ ඔබතුමාලාගේ ආණ්ඩුව කාලේ කටුනායක ගුවන්තොට පොළ දෙවෙනි අදියර අතර මග නැවොත් හේතුව වහල වෙනස් කරන්න ඕනේ කියලා වෙනස් කරන්න රුපියල් මිලියන 600ක් වියදම් කරා වසර 5ක් කිසිම වැඩක් කරන්නේ නැතුව කාලේ ගත වුණා ඒ නිසා ගුවන් සේවා අමාත්‍යාංශයට වෙච්ච පාඩුව ඒ රුපියල් බිලියන 30කට ආසන්නයි කියන එකත් ඔබතුමාට මතක් කරන්න ඕනේ ඔබතුමාලම මේ මත්තල ගුවන්තොට පොළේ වී ගබඩා කරුවා කියන්නේ නැත්නම් තමයි යාත්‍යන්තරයේ විශාල ප්‍රශ්නයක් ආවේ මත්තල ගුවන්තොට පොළේ නෙමෙයි වී ගබඩා කළේ ඔය ගබඩා සංකීර්ණය ඔබතුමා හිටපු රාජ්‍යමතිවරයා විදිහට වගකීමකින් කියනවද ඒ ගබඩා හදලා තියෙන්නේ වී ගබඩා කරන්න කියලා ගබඩා වල ගබඩා කන්න පුළුවන් ගබඩා තියෙන ගබඩා කන්නනේ බඩු ගුවන්තොට පොළකින් එන මගින් යනකොටයි එනකොටයි වී ගේනවද කියලා ඒ කියන්නේ කොයි හරි කවුරු හරි ඒ කියන්නේ වී මේක වී දාන්න හේතුව නෑ ඔය නිකන් මොඩ ප්‍රශ්න හන්ඩ පැය මුත්තුවා ඔබතුමාලා වී ගබඩා කළ වෙච්ච පාඩුව කවුද බාර ගන්න දැන් ගන්න ඔබතුමාලා ගන්න වෙන්නේ තියෙන්නේ ඔබතුමාලා ගන්න දැන් මට කියන්නකෝ නෙළුම් මලේ තිබිච්ච වහල වෙනස් කරන මිලියන 600ක් වියදම් කළා බිලියන 30ක් පාඩු ලබනකොට ඔබතුමාට රාජ්‍යමතුමා ඔව් ඒතර රාජ්‍යමතුමා මම බාර ගන්නවද බිලියන 30ක් පාඩු ලබන්න නෙමෙයි මේ අවස්ථාවේ ඒ වෙලාවට මම මම කතාව කිව්වා පාඩුව බාර ගන්න මම කතාව බාර ගන්න In the meantime, parliamentarian of the All Ceylon Makkal Congress, S M M Musharraf, called on the government to provide more relief to tourism sector employees. While welcoming the relief package given by the government of Sri Lanka, and in view of the second wave of the epidemic now hit all across the island, and Chamber of Tourism and Industry would like to urge the government to consider further relief to the stakeholders of the tourism industry. Number one, tour guides and tourist drivers. were given a relief package as a one time payment of rupees 20000 and 15000 respectively since there has been no tourist business happening i would like to suggest the same payment to be continued for another 6 month till the tourism industry resumes operations number 2 tourist hotels around the island are the biggest hit due to the outbreak a moratorium on loan and vehicle leasing payments was given to the tourism sector for one year since there has not been any improvement in the industry if it it is suggested that the moratorium to be extended for further one year although there was a relief given in a capital payment the bank have been charging interest payments tourism industry has been paying an interest rate from 9% to 15% and it is suggested to totally remove interest payments or to reduce interest rates to 4% since only some of the employees in the hotel and travel sector are members of epf etf funds the majority of employees who are contract temporary category don't receive any compensation from the state therefore it is suggested that a suitable scheme to be worked out to support those who are not covered by the epf etf schemes and also sri lanka has 12 domestic flight operators whose flights are already grounded it is requested to extend the financial relief offered to them till normal returns we will see you once more on the other side of this break bear with us Ceylon Bank the bank with a heart Welcome back. You're watching First at Nine. Now, several key changes were made to the country's map of isolated areas today. Some areas in the Colombo district, including the police area of Blue Mandal, will be brought out of isolation tomorrow morning, while several areas will be isolated, including the police area of Cinnamon Gardens. Another highlight is that the police area of Kalania in the Gumpa district is seeing a complete lift in restrictions. In the meantime the education secretary in the southern province says that 26 schools in the Gaul education division will be closed from tomorrow until the 9th of this month. The National Operation Center for the Prevention of COVID-19 has decided to bring two areas within the Colombo district from isolation at 5 a.m. tomorrow. Accordingly the police area of Blue Mandal and the Vijayapura Grama Niladara division within the police area of Vallampetiya will be brought out of isolation. However, the police areas of Modara, Kotahena, Grand Pass, Wolfendal Street, Dam Street, Kesalvatta, Maligavatta, Demetagoda and Maradana will remain isolated until further notice. 
Further, the Gramanilidara divisions of Vakanda in the police area of Slave Island, Vanathamulla in the police area of Borellam, and Salamulla falling under the police area of Vellampitiam will also continue to be under isolation. What's more, the Lux on the Seven housing scheme in the Vellampitiam police area, Randi housing scheme, and the area south of Ferguson Road in the police area of Matakulia will also remain isolated. In the meantime, several more areas in the Colombo district will be brought under isolation from tomorrow morning. Accordingly, the Hunupitiya Gramanilladara division in the police area of Slave Island, Hate Vatta in the police area of Cinnamon Gardens, and the Kokila Road in the police area of Vellavatta will be isolated from 5 am tomorrow. Meanwhile, in the Gampa district, status of isolation in the police areas of Vattala will be lifted tomorrow morning. However, its Gramanilladara divisions of Keravalapitiya, Hekitta, Kurunduhena, Avarivatta, and Velikadamulla will remain isolated until further notice. Furthermore, all Gramanilidara divisions in Paliaguda will be brought out of isolation, except for Paliaguda Vatta, Paliaguda Gangabada, Migha Vatta, and Pattiya. What's more, it has also been decided to isolate Velegoda North Gramanilidara division in the police area of Kiribadguda from 5 am tomorrow. In the meantime, the entire police area of Kalanir will also be brought out of isolation tomorrow morning. Now, Prime Minister Mahindra Rajpaksha reassures that the government is taking steps to stop fish being poached from Sri Lankan waters by people of other countries. He also identifies fish exports as a prominent source of foreign exchange. The construction work of a proposed 300-metre breakwater, a sand break stretching for 75 metres and an entrance canal for the Rakava anchorage located in between Tangol and Hambantota fishing harbours, Commenced today under the patronage of Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa. Ape Modi di na maluti ka bina taya aragina yano bina rata. Ki maker naat ki mat daam piyora ga. No apni apni te ape mudh araksha aragina diyora karmaant vada diunu kalla janata ava tavash maluti ka sape na maavitra nevi apni te videshe mudal la baagani. Sada pitra te avi matat hatiyu tu garanta puruang kavatiyo. Now in other news, former Chief of Defence Staff Admiral Ravindra Vijay Gunaratna pins a large portion of blame over these two Sunday terror attacks on former Director of State Intelligence Service Nilanta Jayavardhana. Giving evidence before the Presidential Commission probing the attacks, the former Navy commander said that the failure to communicate the intelligence sent by a foreign agency to responsible officials is a serious mistake on part of Nilanta Jayavardhana. He did not spare the Criminal Investigation Department either characterizing their probes as misled and off track. Former Chief of Defence Staff Admiral Ravindra Vijay Gunaratna gave evidence before the Presidential Commission of Inquiry probing the Easter Sunday terror attacks of 2019 yesterday. He told the Commission that the attack could not be prevented owing to the Criminal Investigation Department, which conducted investigations on the Marvanella Lord Buddha statue vandalism, the murder of police officers in Vaunathu, and the discovery of explosives in Vanathuvillua being off track and investigations being misled. He added, quote, the intelligence information received by former director of the State Intelligence Service, Nilanta Jayavardhan, on the 4th of April, warning of an attack was not communicated to the commanders of the Tri Forces. When intelligence is received, it is not acted upon, waiting to see who gets the credit. That piece of information had been given by India. Had we been told of that information, we would have known more on the matter when the Indian Defence Secretary visited Sri Lanka on the 8th of April. Failure to communicate the intelligence sent by a foreign agency to responsible officials is a serious mistake on part of Nilanta Jayavardhana. This situation occurred since intelligence was not given to relevant parties. Looking at the trial explosion with the use of a motorcycle in Katankudi and the explosives set up inside a van in Kochikade, it becomes apparent how much planning had gone into this. What's more, a group of intellectuals who received foreign education was involved in this. This was not planned in Sri Lanka, and it is an attack that happened under the complete supervision of a foreign terrorist group. The target of the IS is very clear within this string of attacks. The IS too targeted Catholic churches and European tourists. It is the same here. The leader of any terrorist group never commits suicide. That person exists in the background. Zahran is just a disciple who conducted the attacks in this country. He is not a leader." Unquote. Then a member of the commission asked the witness whether there were any influences to remove the Navy camp in Silavatura. Former Chief of Defence Staff Admiral Ravindra Vijay Gunaratna responded, quote, Though former Minister Rishad Badiuddin desperately wanted to remove that camp, we did not allow it 
owing to its importance, unquote. In the meantime, Minister of Public Security, Rear Admiral Dr. Sarat Virasekara, had this to say about the investigations conducted on the Easter Sunday attacks of last year. now in other local news, the Department of Excise have found 200 kilograms of narcotics, marking the biggest operation launched by the department in its history. Now the raid was conducted in the area of Thurwave in Maravilla today, following intelligence surveillance across one and a half months. The Sri Lanka Navy and officers of the Excise Department's newly established intelligence unit conducted the operation. The raid was launched at around 2.30 a.m. and 200 kilograms of narcotics were found from a hotel. Several vehicles which were intended to be used in the transportation of the narcotics were also seized. The four suspects apprehended with the drugs were taken to the Department of Excise and they are due to be produced before court after recording statements. We will see you shortly. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching First at Nine. Now, it is no secret that various sections of the Sri Lankan economy took a massive hit with the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. Taking this situation into consideration, the government took measures to give moratoriums on debt and lease repayments. Though that was the case, there were grievances from the public citing violations of the government's decision, leading to the establishment of a department to deal with such complaints by the central bank. As such, Managing Director and Business Cycle Economist of eConsult Asia, Dr. Kenneth De Silva, welcomes the central bank's move as he believes that this could greatly be beneficial in the long term as it could ensure stability in the financial sector. Recently, the central bank adopted a very pragmatic approach in looking at a response to the, the outcry from customers to address their financial grievances, particularly with regard to the COVID moratorium related issues. As a result of this particular outcry by the general public, the central bank established a new department under its uh, stewardship to look at customer grievances and customer complaints. And the new department is titled Financial customer relations department or seeing the dialogue between banker and customer and trying to facilitate a robust communication process to address the particular issues that come out as a result of the moratorium guidelines issued by the central bank. Now this particular development is welcomed by the public and is appreciated and uh, I think it's uh, important that uh, Central Bank does such uh, initiatives because the customers are hard pressed when it comes to addressing their financial grievances and uh, also some grey areas in terms of the penal interest that are being charged and how that has been computed etc. So it's a good uh, platform where banks and customers could meet and engage with the Central Bank and sort out concerns with regard to the moratorium related type of facilities. That is the principal focus of this. In fact, this department is not new. It was established in August this year. So it's relatively new in that sense, but not new to the country from a COVID stand point of view, even though we are in our second phase of COVID. The grievances still persist because the central bank has extended the moratorium so therefore people have welcomed this establishment of this new department and i think people should continue to access this as a means of rectifying some of their issues in the long run i think this type of department is useful 
because it brings about financial sector stability and ensures that there is a fair hearing given to the customers who have nowhere else to turn to in such situations. So it's a welcome move and it's highly appreciated by the public and should be commended. Now, as the market is heading towards the festive season, it is expected that the turnover levels and the activity levels will slow down at the Colombo Bores in the coming week. Sri Lankan shares ended higher for a ninth straight session on Friday, with the All Share Price Index closing 0.59% higher to end with its fifth weekly gain. Let's have a look at what we can expect from the market in the coming week. Looking at the upcoming week, we feel there could be a bit of a slowdown in the market. First of all, uh, mainly because that the market has been running for nine consecutive days at the moment. And in addition to that, we are going towards the festive season. We feel that there could be a slowdown in activity levels and turnover levels due to that. And on selected counters, we feel that there could be a bit of profit in taking place. Also, another reason is that we are seeing that there is a shift from mid cap counters towards the blue chip counters, and that is also likely to bring in the slowness in the market. So, overall, we feel that the market could be a bit slow, but there is good opportunity to collect or accumulate in the market, specifically in the capital goods sectors and also some of the material counters. So with that, we feel that investors should be looking out to buying if there is any weakness in the market at the moment. Now, South Korean health officials announced today that stricter social distancing rules will be imposed in the country from Tuesday, thus limiting gatherings to a maximum of 50 people. These measures came into effect after the health authorities urged the public to stay vigilant against small clusters growing in the form of a third COVID-19 wave. In the meantime, Russia conducted mass vaccination of its COVID-19 vaccine Sputnik V. India's daily coronavirus cases rose by less than 40,000 for the seventh straight day, with 36,011 new infections reported from the past day. Indian health officials said that the total active case load had significantly fallen to 403,248, today recording the lowest after 138 days. India currently has the second highest number of COVID-19 cases in the world. Its debt toll currently stands at 140,325. Moscow began distributing the Sputnik V COVID-19 shot via 70 clinics today, marking Russia's first mass vaccination against the disease. The task force said the Russian-made vaccine would first be made available to doctors and other medical workers, teachers and social workers because they ran the highest risk of exposure to the disease. Authorities stated that the age for those receiving the vaccine shots has been capped at 60. People with certain underlying health conditions, pregnant women and those who have a respiratory illness for the past two weeks are barred from vaccination. In the meantime, South Korea's health minister announced today that heightened social distancing rules for the capital Seoul and surrounding areas will be imposed as authorities struggle to contain the nation's largest wave of coronavirus infection in nine months. Under the measures announced today, which will go into effect on Tuesday, gatherings of 50 or more people are prohibited. Gyms and karaoke bars must close. Religious services must be held online or by broadcast and sports events will be held without spectators. These measures came in the backdrop where South Korean authorities urged the public to stay vigilant as small coronavirus clusters emerged in third wave in Seoul. And that's it from all of us here at First at Nine. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.